Thanks very much, Carl, and thanks for having me here today. I'd first like to acknowledge that we meet on the land of the Ghana people and uh, pay my respects to their elders, past and present, as well as any other elders from other nations that are here with us today. Uh, we need to remind ourselves often that we meet on what is and always will be Ghana land. Today I've been invited to speak with you about Welcome to Australia's Theory of Creating Social Change. And I want to do that by talking about a recent campaign that we've begun um, around the protection of children. According to statistics out a couple of weeks ago, there are currently 500, uh, more than 500 children in detention on Christmas Island. At the moment, um, Australia is planning to send uh, many more children unaccompanied and with families off to Manus Island for an indefinite period. You might have heard the numbers uh, five and six years mentioned a few times. Um, I'll come back to this later, but you may remember as well that Australia has been here before. In the mid-2000s, we had uh, many children in detention. We had stories uh, of adults um, self-harming, children self-harming, committing suicide, um, and more. And in the election that first um, appointed Kevin Rudd, uh, public opinion started to shift and we started to say no to children in detention. You might remember that we heard uh, human rights advocates, um, advocates for children, church groups, charities, and many people calling for the end of having children in detention, and in fact calling for the end of um, offshore mandatory detention. In fact, for the last 20 years, we've really heard um, the opposition of many groups being loud, vocal, and given great exposure by the media. Australia and our leaders have been well aware of the resounding chorus of negativity towards um, mandatory and indefinite detention and really have heard uh, the disgust that many people who are advocates of compassion and justice feel. And yet um, we have still ended up with the policies that we have today. Um, we don't have these policies because it's logical, because it's humane, or because they're aligned with Australian political values. We really have them because public opinion has demanded this outcome. We're in a political reality where public opinion has said this is the best way forward. And so what it's left for people like me and others in the refugee advocacy sector is the realisation that we need a new strategy. We've been unable to reframe the debate and gain the support of mainstream Australia. We've not been able to change the conversation in such a way that humane policies are rewarded by the electorate. It's clear, really, that other voices have set the tone of the debate. And now both major parties know that the votes are with whoever has the harshest policy and the most hysterical protectionist rhetoric. We've not lost this battle because of, an effort, uh, because of a lack of effort or a lack of logic or a lack of education. We're in the place we are today simply because we've lost the attention of the public. For change to happen in any area, asylum seeker policy in regards to our treatment of Australia's First Nations, uh, in any area that we want to see progressive social change take place, we need to have a strategy that not only addresses the legislation we want changed, but addresses getting public opinion on our side. We need a strategy um, that not only is against those that have made decisions that we don't like, but actually invite the electorate to join with us in standing up for Australian values and the character of our nation. And I don't believe that uh, Welcome to Australia has found the magic answer for social change or anything like that. But what I do know is that we don't change the mind of a government or of an opposition without first, or at least concurrently, changing the heart of the people that vote them into power. What's more, for people-first policies to have long-term effectiveness, legislative change alone is really a faint victory. It is a faint victory to change the legislation, but to leave the heart of a nation that enabled it in the first place unmodified. For Welcome to Australia, that means that we've set ourselves a long-term target, a target of creating welcoming communities that demand welcoming rhetoric and respond to political leaders who call out the best in us rather than appealing to our worst. We want to make prejudice unpopular. We want to make cruelty hurt at the polls instead of being rewarded. We want to cultivate such a culture of welcome that the rhetoric of fear and the politics of division and envy begin to fall on deaf ears. 
Our goal is community transformation that forces our leaders to recognise that public opinion is no longer with xenophobia and hysterical protectionism. Our strategy for this is, is kind of untested and is continually developing. Like I said before, we don't have a secret formula for social change. Yet what I firmly believe and think that I've learned so far is that the same words that have always been said by the same voices that have always said them to the same listeners that have heard them before doesn't create change. What we need is new voices who will engage new audiences and present an old message in a new frame that invites other people to join the conversation. I believe to create fresh momentum for social change, we need fresh voices with fresh, fresh messages speaking to fresh audiences. And so our strategy for Welcome to Australia is for people to hear an unexpected message from unexpected quarters. We've looked for middle Australia, mainstream Australia, pop culture icons, right-wing business leaders, traditional liberal voters, sports stars, actors on mainstream TV, and people like that to begin to call out the best in the Australian character, to say we are compassionate, we are welcoming, we are inclusive, and it's wrong that we treat people the way we are at the moment. And it's not for people to call we don't use these people to call for Australians to vote a certain way or to back a particular policy, but to celebrate Australian values. We're fair, we're compassionate, we're generous, we support the underdog. And so what we dream of is that the policy that clashes with these values and the rhetoric that seeks to erode these values will no longer gain traction in the electorate. Social change is not the same as legislative change. Legislation on its own has little power to change the heart of a nation. But when the heart of a nation changes, legislation always follows. And so part of our strategy is to reframe the debate, to invite people to consider not only what are we going to do about the problem of asylum seekers, but also to consider the question, who are we becoming? Who are we becoming and how is that reflected in the direction of our policy and the nature of our public debate? Who are we becoming? When we begin to ask the question like that, it enables us to imagine new stakeholders and therefore invite new potential allies into the conversation. We have a simple strategic framework for some of the thinking that, that we do in order to invite new people to join with us in our dream for a different Australian future. And these are the questions we ask ourselves. Number one, who are the audiences that are no longer listening to our conversation? Secondly, who are the unlikely voices that could speak to them? And thirdly, how would the message need to be reframed to inspire those people to proactively engage again? Social change requires new audiences inspired by new voices speaking old issues in a new frame. Let's remember that innovation is just as essential in the advocacy sector as it is anywhere else. If we return to the issue of children in detention where I began, our most recent campaign is a good example of what we're at least trying to do. We had television identity Jessica Rowe, you might remember her from Sunrise and, and other places. She wrote a piece for us called Their Children Are Just Like Mine. And it was published not on an activist website like an, an Amnesty or, or someone like that or Children Out of Detention, but it was published on Mamma Mia, which is a mainstream uh, site whose uh, target audience is, is, is really mainstream Australian women. And so it was published there where there are a lot of uh, beauty articles and parenting articles, celebrity gossip, all of that kind of stuff, essentially to reach out with a group of people that have disengaged with the current debate. So Jessica Rowe wrote a piece simply saying that the children of asylum seekers are just as human as our own beautiful kids. She wasn't saying vote a certain way. She wasn't even really saying the you know, Pacific Solution Mark II is terrible. She was simply saying asylum seeker kids are no different than my kids and they deserve the same kind of opportunities, the same kind of freedom. They deserve the opportunity for fun, family, freedom, just like your children and my children do. We created a little hashtag for Twitter, which was kids like mine. And then we invited uh, parents all over Australia to upload their photo at the bottom of the, the site and also to Twitter and Facebook with a little quote saying, kids like mine shouldn't be sent to Manus Island, or kids like mine deserve to go to school, or kids like mine deserve uh, to have a birthday party, things like that, that really anyone, no matter what your political persuasion is, can agree with and engage in. And so quite simply, we used a new voice 
to speak to a new audience with the same old message, children shouldn't be censored attention, but putting it in a new frame. Their kids are just like mine. And we had pictures uh, uh, from parents all over Australia showing their kids riding bikes, going to birthday parties, swimming in the pool, going to school, uh, just hugging their mum, hugging their dad, all of that kind of thing, to simply change the idea that these asylum seekers or queue jumpers or boat people are any less human than you or I are. And so that's just a simple way that we've, uh, I guess, applied our formula. New voices speaking to new audiences with an old message in a new frame. We know that we do this in the area of asylum seekers and refugees and trying to change the conversation. But what we have seen over the last year in Australia is that public opinion is where the power is when we want to see lasting change in Australia. Um, sometimes it lasts longer than others, but we saw when the live export um, uh, article, the uh, show, went on four corners that night. We had legislative change within 24 hours, which eventually got overturned again. But we saw there, in, as an example, the power of public opinion. And for so long, I think, our advocates in many areas have expended all our energy being angry and saying, change the legislation, change the legislation. What we really need to do is to start to be innovative and say, how do we change the heart of our nation that allows that legislation in the first place? We get the leadership we deserve and we get the policies that we vote for. If we want social change in any area, asylum seekers or the areas that you guys are working in, in different ways, we need to have new methods of speaking to new audiences with the same old message we've been saying forever, that we want a truly just society where everyone belongs and no matter who you are, where you've come from, how you got here and what your journey has been, you're a person and you deserve to be treated with dignity and respect and have all the opportunities to thrive in our multicultural modern Australia. So thanks for listening to me today. I hope that's been slightly helpful. It's a pleasure to see you.